So I'll be presenting my topic, evaluation of uh, deep corneal vascular changes using on-fast OCT in uh, CAC. And uh, my co-authors are Dr. Rohan Chawla, Dr. Deepak Sundar, and Dr. Nimiraj. So there are no financial interests to be disclosed. Uh, as we all know, CSC is a, it comes under the pachyoid spectrum, which simply means dilatation of the deep choroidal vessels, leading to compression of the middle choroidal vessels and the superficial chorea capillaries. Uh, so the purpose of my study was to detect changes in the deep choroidal vasculature of CSC patients during baseline and following resolution using on-fast SSOCT. Uh, so we took nine patients who were diagnosed with CSC and had resolution of the disease either spontaneously or through active intervention, which includes medical treatment or uh, PDT or uh, subthreshold laser. And the inclusion criteria involved patients only with NSD, that's the Spitznas uh, type 1 classification, uh, CSC which resolved within six months, and uh, patients with subfoveal and juxtafoveal leaks on FA. Exclusion criteria included those patients with PED, chronic CSC, no complete resolution of fluid, presence of the double layer sign or CNB, extrafoveal CSC leaks or diffuse leaks on FA, and patients with high myopia more than minus six diopters. So we used the DRI OCT Triton from Topcon to capture on fast uh, SSOCT and Octa images. Three into three millimeter Octa scans were acquired. And uh, so we did a manual segmentation by entering. Uh, the depth from 150 to 300 microns below the RP and root membrane band, which could be, which can be seen here. Uh, so they can be entered by, they can be done by entering the uh, parameters on the uh, right box. And uh, at this level, what happens is the decorrelation analysis is unable to detect any flow. So we only get on fast topographical images rather than an angiography image. Um, so after uh, uh, FA was available in all these patients to determine the point of leak. So we have taken this density map. Over here, what we did is the XY localization line was, uh, used to mark the leak as superficial uh, vascular layer corresponding to the FFA. So if this was the leak in, on FFA, it was exactly mapped on the superficial vascular layer and the uh, underlying deep choroidal vessels was analyzed. Uh, the density map was analyzed using the uh, image software by NIH. So the density map image of the on fast scan was pixelated using 8-bit to create the black and white image and a grayscale image. Over here, we uh, considered the black spaces to be the lumen and the white areas to be the stroma. So the vessel lumen was delineated manually by a single observer. Uh, the demarcation, uh, the demarcation of the area of the lumen was done by marking the circumference of the lumen, whereas the measurement of the largest width was done by uh, drawing a line along the uh, maximum uh, width. So the scale gave measurements in pixels actually, which were calibrated to three into three scans using the imaging software to measure the uh, width and the area of vessels in millimeter and millimeter square. So the uh, analysis was done uh, using SPSS software and uh, the mean of area and width was compared during baseline and post resolution using pair T test and the significance level was set at 0.05. Out of the nine patients we had, seven were males and two were females. The mean age was around 41 years. Uh, if you see the uh, results, the best character visual acuity did improve significantly and the greatest width of lumen and the area of lumen decreased in uh, post resolution in these patients. Whereas the choroidal thickness was the same, did not significantly reduce uh, from baseline to post resolution. So these are some representative images I want to show. Uh, well, this is uh, during baseline, and you can see the lumen size which has decreased significantly at resolution. These are other images. Again, similarly, significant reduction of the size and the uh, width of the lumen. Uh, with this one patient, do not have a significant size of the lumen. Uh, so this patient again had a significant decrease. In this patient, the point of leak was exactly taken at the marked area, and we can see a significant reduction over here. The uh, size, the lumen uh, space has been decreased. Uh, so this was not a part of the study where we compared the uh, lumen size from normal and CSC patients. If you see normal patients, the lumen was actually more slender than the CSC patients, which was more uh, irregular. So to uh, conclude, uh, our study confirms the presence of dilated choroidal vessels, which is the basic pathology of CSC. And CSC is mainly a disorder of the failure of focal autoregulation of choroidal flow. So when resolution occurs, uh, resolution occurs when physiological compensatory mechanisms or therapeutic measures are somehow able to reduce the flow to the dilated choroidal vessel. Future research uh, will help in uh, creating inter interventions targeting the choroidal flow through these larger vessels without leading to choroidal ischemia. And, uh, According to my study, choroidal thickness was not a good marker of disease activity as it was mostly uh, the focal caliber of a single large vessel which determined the activity. And uh, limitations were obviously it was a small scale study with only nine patients and larger studies are required to establish results and discover new targeted treatment options. Uh, periodic, uh, periodic monthly scans uh, could help in uh, studying the dynamic changes in the lumen size 
and whereas a control group is required. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Nasik. Uh, okay. So we have a, a two and a half minutes for discussion this paper. So, Dr. Nasik, we already know that CSC is a part of the pachychoroid spectrum. And uh, here, what you are trying to again uh, tell us is that the OCT is picking up a much wider or more, uh, you know, um, voluminous choroidal vessels. I mean, the large pachychoroid vessels. And we all know that uh, during the active phase of the CSC, we do have the thickening of the choroid. So, I mean, what additional uh, thing were you able to pick up by doing this study? Ma'am, this is just basically a new investigation module which is showing the uh, exact anatomy of the uh, dilated vessel. And of this, uh, this could be used to, uh, in future treatment, for example, if we could uh, see if the treatment is actually working. Like, you know, we are working on different uh, treatment options, topical, even we're trying tropical uh, brimodin in such patients to see, uh, because as we have uh, seen the physiology of these patients, the uh, choroidal vessels have alpha receptors. So we've also devised new, new we've, we've just, uh, what it is, we've just thought about new treatment strategies. So this could be a tool to see if whether the uh, uh, choroidal lumen size is decreasing with our treatment options or are we going through the wrong path? Uh, yeah, so this is mainly to look at our resolution phase. Mm, this one, uh, have you taken the Because uh, these are all the CSR patients, right? Yes, sir. Uh, so you have, have you tried it? A patient, those are just having a pachychoroid, no CSR, and yes, having a pachychoroid and CSR. Have you compared that? Uh, so we haven't compared. Yes, so we haven't compared them as such. But then we have seen these patients with pachychoroid who do have dilated choroidal vessels. Sir. But we haven't compared. We just compared with the normal patients in a different study. And that's exactly because you showed normal comparison. That's the reason I asked this question. So. And we've also compared patients who did not uh, go through resolution, and they still had the the vessel. There was no significant reduction in the vessel size when the patients did not have a resolution of the CSC. Uh, I think there are a lot of assumptions you make regarding you ma you measure the vessel uh, width manually and yes, your sir. case number is small. So there may be a lot of overlap of, you know, the measure, uh, the, the exactly. data. So the yes. SD and all will be overlapping. So I don't think it is so easy to measure it and tell that these seven will decrease in a short time. Yes, so unless until you have a large data to support this. True, sir. Actually, most of our patients, uh, like not most of our patients around, we had we had taken around 23 patients, sir, of which uh, uh, around those 14 patients did not come under the inclusion criteria. So we could only had data for these nine patients. And the second thing is, sir, there have been studies earlier where the choroidal vascularity index has been uh, measured, where again they've uh, measured the entire length or the entire uh, uh, area of the lumen or the white spaces compared to the uh, black spaces of the lumen, and they found that there was a significant decrease in the increase in the choroidal vascular index in uh, CAC patients. So R was something based on that. So we just wanted to see if there's a specific vessel and what is happening exactly on an on pass scan in these uh, deeper layers. So this was a this was actually uh, it was a, it was a it was, a, it was an incidental finding. So in one patient we just found out that there was a uh, there was an increase in the we saw an abdominal lumen. And then we start. We tried to extra extrapolate it into different other patients. We started reading scans and we saw these changes. Sir. So there are a lot of uh, variations. Like at, the, at what depth you measure the width of the vessel? So we kept it. Uh, if it are a little superficial, you may measure it small. And mm -hmm. if you are deep right at the broadest, you will measure it larger. So mm -hmm. it's not. It's you are doing manually. So it may not be very accurate and it may not be very reliable. Mm -hmm. exactly. But the number, of, the number of cases you are having. So we kept the depth at the exact, uh, so for all patients, we kept the depth at 150 to 300 microns. And what we saw is it was a superficial area. So superficial, when we went superficially, we could not find such uh, abnormal uh, lumen. So then we had uh, decided that this is not an artifact due to the uh, neurosensory detachment. This is a separate uh, lumen, which is quite deeper. But then, yes, uh, we, kept, uh, we kept it standard. We kept it 150 to 300 microns in all patients. Not all patients have the same thing. It's okay. 